Hey, we have here today another integral from the MIT integration be 2023. This was regular season problem 14. We have the integral from zero to 100 of the floor of x times x times the ceiling of x dx. Okay, I thought this was an interesting problem just having the floor and ceiling in the same integral. And in the past, my method on these has been to break up the integral where the bounds just differ by one. So what we can do is we can write our bound, we can, write, we can break it up like we'll have one integral from zero to one and like the next one I'm gonna do one to two and so on. And the reason this is so helpful is because with the floor and ceiling, these are gonna just become constant values. Like if we evaluate everything between zero and one with the floor function, that's gonna round us down. So that's gonna give us a zero. X is just gonna be X. The ceiling and the range between zero and one, that's gonna bring us up. It's gonna like round us up one to one. But because we have the zero here, this piece is all going to zero. So we're not gonna to have to worry about that first integral. And for the second one, doing the same thing between one and two, the floor function is gonna take us down to one. Then we're gonna have our x, and the ceiling function is gonna take us up to two. Now this is gonna go on and on like this, and we'll just do the last one. So the last integral is gonna go from 99 to 100. The floor between 99 and 100 is gonna take us down to 99. We'll have our x, and then the ceiling function in this region will bring us up to 100. And so of course, I don't wanna write out all these integrals, but what I can do is generalize this. So we'll, so what we can do is write this and I'll just create a lower bound we'll call n, which will be like this value. And the upper bound is just gonna be n plus one. And so in this region between n and n plus one, the floor is gonna take us down to n and the ceiling is gonna take us up to n plus one and we're still gonna have an x value. And so what we can do is write this as a sum of 100 integrals where the first one starts when n equals zero, and the last one, n, is gonna be this value, which is gonna be 99. But since we already determined our first integral zero, I'm just gonna remove that one and change it. We might as well start at one, because this one's zero, it's not gonna affect the value, so we'll just start it at one. So what I'm gonna do is multiply the n in here first, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna write this as n squared plus n, and then integrating this, we're gonna have x squared over two, and we just need to evaluate it from n to n plus one. And then we'll just need to evaluate this thing and I'll bring down my n squared plus n. So plugging in n plus one, we're gonna have an n plus one squared. And then plugging in our n, we're gonna have a minus, we're gonna be subtracting n squared and I'll just, and I think I'll just bring the one half in front for that two right there. And then so let's just simplify this thing. So if I multiply this out, we're gonna have n squared plus two n plus one minus n squared. Well, the n squareds are gonna cancel and just give me two n plus one. And then next, I'm just gonna multiply these two terms together and we'll bring the half out front here. I guess I could bring it out in front of the whole thing, but let's just bring our half right there and multiply this out. So we're gonna have two n cubed um, plus two n squared plus n squared plus, the last term's gonna be a plus n. Of course, I could combine this and write this as three n squared. So distributing in this half, we're gonna end up with n cubed plus three halves n squared, and then half to n, we're gonna have one half n. But from here, because we're adding within the sum, I can break this into three separate sums. So I can write this as we'll have one of n cubed. And then this one, I'll bring my three halves in front and we'll sum n squared. And this one, I'll bring one half in front and we'll sum just n. But the nice thing there is for each of these, we have formulas through these. Typically the formulas will use n, but we already used n, so I'm gonna say k. So we have a formula for the first k natural numbers, for the first k squares, and the first k cubes. So let's just look at the formula we have for each of these cases. Okay, so now I've just rewritten this with the formula in red for each of the three cases of just the natural numbers, squares, and cubes. And for this, we know how many terms we're calculating. It's gonna be 99. So our k value for this is gonna be equal to 99. So, so we can plug 99 in for k at the end, but for now, I just wanna simplify this before I try to plug in my 99. And so first we have some cancellation here. Three with six can be written as two, but now we have half times half. So I can put a four in the denominator here. And same thing here, I can put a four in the denominator. So what I can do is some factoring here. I'm gonna factor a one fourth out of everything. And I also can factor out a k and I also can factor out a k plus one. So we'll just bring out this k times k plus one. And doing that inside the parentheses, we're gonna have, for this term, we're still gonna have a k times k plus one. Here, we're just gonna have a plus two k plus one. And then here, we're just gonna have a one. I can add one and one here and get two, so let's just do that. But then doing that, of course, I can factor a two out right here and get back a k plus one here, and we'll have a two on the outside. 
So what that's gonna allow me to do now, we have a k plus one in common, so we can factor a k plus one out and write this as k plus one squared. And then inside here, we're just gonna have a k plus two, but let me clean it up before we continue. Then from here, I think just to consolidate this, I'm gonna take my x plus two here, and I'm gonna write this as x plus one plus one, just to kind of distribute this back. And so when I rewrite it, I'm just trying to get some simplification so I can express this nicely. So now with this x plus one, I can combine this as an x plus one cubed, uh, over four, and then we'll distribute to the one and we'll have this other term here. And of course you could simplify this a bunch of different ways. I don't know if it really matters, but at this point, what I wanna do is plug back in our K value. And the nice thing is if K is 99, K plus one is 100. So that's kind of what I'm trying to set up. So if we plug this back in, 100 here cubed is gonna be a million and we've got 99 out front. So this is gonna be 99 million. <laughs> And then for this term, we're adding, we got another 99 times 100 squared is gonna be uh, 10,000, yeah. So we're gonna have 990,000 here, and this is all over four. And so I'm just gonna add these together and I get 9999000 all over four. So if you divide a four into this, what you'll get is 24,997,500. Now the way MIT had it in the answer key, they wrote it as 100 to the fourth minus 100 squared over four. Of course, these are all equal. One difference I noticed with MIT solution is if you happen to do this problem and you sum, instead of summing from zero to 99, if you sum from one to 100, summing this way, it's actually more convenient to get to this solution. Doing my way, it's more convenient to get to this, but either way, it's still the same value. So, so anyway, we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching today. Have a great day.